Dear viewers, in the previous video, we have seen the external features of the heart. In this video, we will see the blood supply of the heart, which is also called as coronary circulation. So, to revise on the surface, this is the sternocostal surface of the heart. This is the right atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. This is the apex of the heart and this is the base of the heart. The surface on which the heart rests, this is the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface. So let us recollect the grooves and the sulci present on the heart. Separating the atria from the ventricles all around encircling the whole heart like a crown is the coronary sulcus also called as the atrioventricular groove. As I have already told before, the left side of the anterior atrioventricular groove is obscured because of the it is obscured because of the presence of the large arteries that emerge out of the ventricles. On the anterior aspect, only the right side of the atrioventricular groove is clearly seen. In this specimen, we have removed the epicardium, that is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, as well as the epicardial fat. This exposes a large artery present inside the groove. So this large artery that arises from the anterior aortic sinus is called as the right coronary artery. So this is the right coronary artery. We can see the branches of the right coronary artery. These are the atrial branches and these are the ventricular branches of the right coronary artery. The first atrial branch of the right coronary is usually longer and it winds around the right atrium to supply the SA node. So this artery is also called as the SA nodal artery. So the right atrioventricular groove lodges the right coronary artery and this groove is also crossed by some veins, some small veins that drain directly into the right atrium. These veins are the anterior cardiac veins. From the right coronary artery, we have a large ventricular branch that runs along the inferior border of the heart. This is called as the right marginal artery which is a very large ventricular branch that supplies the right ventricle. Now, present in the anterior interventricular groove, we are able to see another artery. This artery arises from this large artery. This artery is called as the left coronary artery that arises from the left posterior aortic sinus. It is a very small trunk. Immediately it divides into an artery that runs in the anterior interventricular groove and another artery that turns posteriorly. So this artery is called as the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery which is clinically called as the left anterior descending artery. And the other branch that goes posteriorly is called as the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. Now arising from the anterior interventricular artery, we are able to see a large branch that runs along the left border of the heart. This artery is called as the left marginal artery. Running along with the anterior interventricular artery, there will be a vein which is not very clear in this specimen. That vein is called as the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein runs in the anterior interventricular sulcus, turns around the left border to continue with the coronary sinus which forms the largest vein that drains the heart. Now to see the grooves and contents on the inferior surface and inferior surface. So this is the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. This is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle. Separating them is the posterior interventricular groove and this represents the posterior part of the coronary sulcus. So here I had already told that there is a right coronary artery. The right coronary artery turns around and it enters the posterior part of the coronary sulcus. At the same time, at the same time, the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery also enters the coronary sulcus and the two arteries anastomose in the coronary sulcus close to the crux of the heart. So the crux is the meeting point of interatrial 
coronary and posterior interventricular grooves. Here, the circumflex branch of the left coronary will anastomose with the right coronary artery. Now, before the right coronary terminates, it gives off a branch that enters the posterior interventricular groove. This artery is called as posterior interventricular artery which in most of the people is a branch of the right coronary artery. In a few people, it is a branch of the left coronary artery. This decides the cardiac dominance of a person. Running along with the posterior interventricular artery, we are able to see another vein that drains into the coronary sinus here. This vein is called as the middle cardiac vein. So this is the middle cardiac vein. We are able to see another vein that runs on the posterior surface of the left ventricle. This vein is called as the posterior vein of the left ventricle. We can also see a small thin oblique vein present on the left atrium. This is called as the oblique vein of the left atrium. This is the largest vein that is present in the coronary sulcus, that is the coronary sinus. So, draining into the coronary sinus from the right end, we have the small cardiac vein. From the left end, we have the great cardiac vein. From the middle, we have the middle cardiac vein. And there is an oblique vein of the left atrium and a posterior vein of the left ventricle. So, these are the tributaries of the coronary sinus. And then the coronary sinus will open into the right atrium. Now let us just summarize the coronary sinus and its tributaries. This is the posterior aspect of the atrioventricular groove or the coronary sulcus. This large vein which is present in the coronary sulcus is the coronary sinus. This is the left end of the coronary sinus and this is the right end of the coronary sinus. The right end of the coronary sinus terminates into the right atrium close to the opening of the inferior vena cava. The left end which is tapering receives the great cardiac vein. It also receives the oblique vein of the left atrium and the posterior vein of the left ventricle. Draining into the right end is the small cardiac vein that runs along with the right coronary artery and draining onto the inferior aspect of the coronary sinus is the middle cardiac vein that runs along with the posterior interventricular artery. So in this video, we have seen the coronary arteries, mainly heart is supplied by the right coronary and the left coronary arteries. The right coronary artery is a branch of the anterior aortic sinus, runs in the atrioventricular groove and terminates by anastomosing with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is a branch of the left posterior aortic sinus that gives rise to the anterior interventricular artery and mm -hmm. circumflex mm -hmm. artery. The anterior interventricular artery will anastomose with the posterior interventricular artery in the posterior interventricular groove whereas the circumflex artery will anastomose with the right coronary artery near the crux of the heart. Thank you. Hello viewers. After learning the normal anatomy of coronary circulation, let us see the clinical anatomy related to the coronary circulation. So the first condition that affects the coronary circulation is called as ischemic heart disease. So as the name says, this heart disease is a condition produced due to ischemia, that is loss of blood supply to a particular part of the heart. And the most common reason for this ischemia is a block in the coronary arteries. So as it can be seen in this picture, one of the arteries contains a material that is occluding its lumen. This material is usually called as an atherosclerotic plaque. So when an atherosclerotic plaque along with platelets and thrombus obstructs the lumen of a coronary artery, the area supplied by this artery undergoes ischemia or loss of blood supply. If the condition is not reversed quickly, then it can lead to permanent death of the tissue and this results in what is called as infarction. 
so this condition is called as myocardial infarction where there is death of a particular part of the heart due to obstruction of coronary arteries that supply that area this is mainly because the coronary arteries are end arteries and there is no precapillary anastomosis now the patient usually presents with a constricting kind of precordial chest pain that radiates to the medial side of the left arm the pain can also radiate to the jaw as well as to the back in the interscapular area and the pain is usually associated with sympathetic symptoms like profuse sweating and palpitation so that is ischemic heart disease and myocardial infarction the next applied anatomy related to the coronary circulation is called as coronary angiography so as the name says it is an investigation and it's a radiographic investigation that uses x rays as the radiation so in this procedure a catheter is inserted through a blood vessel usually a straight blood vessel in the thigh that is the femoral artery so the catheter is introduced through the femoral artery which then passes through the abdominal aorta and finally it reaches the root of the aorta where we have the aortic sinuses that give rise to the coronary arteries so after reaching the uh, sinus of choice a dye is injected this is a radio opaque dye a dye is injected and uh, x-ray or ct is taken and a digital subtraction angiography image is created which will look like this so by looking at this image the cardiologist can identify whether the vessel is normal or whether there is an obstruction if so how many obstructions are there and how severe is the obstruction so this investigation is called as coronary angiography next is called as percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty or in simple words angioplasty so here what is done is as we have already seen in the previous slide uh, during angiography a catheter is introduced into the artery of choice now suppose the cardiologist identifies an obstruction that there is a block in a particular artery which is quite a large block that is affecting the distal vascularity in that case the balloon tipped catheter is introduced into this block and after reaching the site of block the balloon is inflated so as we can see here once inflated the block gets removed the block gets dilated and the blood vessel regains its original uh, diameter and then we can see that when the balloon is then deflated a stent alone is placed in position so as to prevent collapse of the artery after the procedure so this is called as angioplasty but this may not be feasible in all conditions like severe obstruction and multiple vessel obstruction in that case then the treatment of choice is called as cardiac bypass so cardiac bypass or coronary artery bypass graft is a procedure where blood vessels veins or arteries from other sides are harvested and they are used to suture the blood vessels by bypassing the obstruction so as we can see here there is an obstruction in the right coronary artery there is an obstruction in the left anterior descending artery this is the most common site of block so to bypass this blood vessels are harvested and they are sutured distal to the artery so here the blood vessel used is a great saphenous vein here what is used is the internal thoracic or the internal mammary artery which is a branch of the first part of subclavian artery other vessels of choice are radial artery Thank you for your patient listening.